For organized fecal sludge management programs, collections is a big component. In this step, you need to gather some evidence first. You're trying to figure out approximately how much waste will you be gathering from the community each day and how easy or difficult will it be to access the sites. In some instances, vacuum trucks will be the primary method. Fortunately, there are tools that can make this job easier. This is the interactive septage management toolkit that was prepared by USAID back in 2009. For this example, we inserted data from Dumaguete City in the Philippines, where they have 22,000 homes and 3,500 businesses. We added some additional data that we obtained from the survey that was conducted and found out that their average daily design flow was 60 cubic meters per day. In this case, Dumaguete, they've got 60 cubic meters of septage that they need to collect each day. Let's take a look at the desludging infrastructure that's going to be required to handle that load. This screen allows the user to calculate the number of trucks that will be required based on the total volume of septage to be collected. The variables include the volume of the truck and the time and distance that it takes to access the site and to return with a full load. Then use the toolkit to estimate the cost of the collections program by using local values. In some communities, access by the vacuum truck is limited due to narrow streets or steep slopes. In this image, an auger is used to shoot the waste out of the septic tank and into barrels that are placed in the back of a pickup truck. The pickup truck then takes the waste either directly to the treatment plant or to a transfer station. For communities that are far away from the treatment plant, transfer stations can increase the overall efficiency of the program. For communities that have on-demand desludging programs, fixed transfer stations may be the answer. Locating transfer stations in your community may not be a straightforward process. This is something very much that is impacted by the NIMBY syndrome, which is not in my backyard. Transfer stations can be noisy, they can generate odors and other nuisances. Special consultations with the community affected is definitely required. For communities with scheduled desludging programs, larger trucks can serve as mobile transfer stations, thereby saving lots of time and money on fuel and wear and tear on trucks. Trucks are at the heart of organized desludging programs. They may be owned by the utility, or the municipality, or city, or maybe even the private sector. In some instances, like in Manila Water, the utility owns the trucks and contracts out to the private sector for the driving and operations of the trucks. In any case, it's the motor pool that keeps the trucks on the road. My name is Dave Fernandez. Uh, I'm working here as a mechanic in a safe stage. The trucks are checked over carefully at the start of each shift. Mechanics check for the fluid levels and then open up the truck to check for the vital signs. This is a, bit, a little bit heavy. heavy. <laughs> The mechanic checks the vacuum system and looks for signs of cracked hoses or worn fittings. He checks the engine compartment for signs of oil leaks. He checks the other side of the engine, also looking for oil leaks loose fittings, or other issues. Takes a look at the vacuum hose where it enters the tank and looks for corrosion on the battery. Here's another look at the vacuum pump from the other side. And here's the connection from the power takeoff to the pump and the grease fitting. We, okay, so check, we check, we check every oil. day, every day. We check engine oil. Okay. So, and then afterwards, we check the, all the pump belts. Okay. Inside. The fan belts, and then the, the radiator, water, and then the hose. Right. Everything we check. 
before leaving this uh, uh, plant. Okay. Even the tires, even the battery, we check all, the, even the hose. That's it. And then there up would be hose. Maintaining the inventory of tools, spare parts, and consumables is the job of the storeroom's manager. Maintaining an adequate supply of spare parts minimizes downtime. In order to save money at Dumaguete, they fabricate the tanks on-site with an on-staff welder. This is the boneyard of old tanks. The tanks range in size from 1.5 to 5.5 cubic meters. They typically last about four years before they corrode. Septage trucks should be equipped with hand tools and disinfectant in case of spills. There should be adequate personal protective equipment for all of the employees. The releasing of the hose, we will like that, then pull to, 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 to the CR. Then lock. 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 Uh, lock. Ah, okay, okay. And then, and how then do you it should be the engine run. Oh, the engine it should, should be, be running. running. Okay. Then, so procedure, the, I, I told you before, neutral and then suction. And then this is for the gas. As far as accessing the tank, these guys had it easy. Sometimes even finding the tank can be a real challenge. Tanks may be buried, they may be in the backyard, or even under the structure. Sometimes they're not tanks at all, merely pits with concrete lids. This image shows an emptying operation in Dakar, Senegal where the system is located in an internal courtyard and gaining access requires cooperation with the residents. Oftentimes, waste in a septic tank or pit is very dense and viscous, making it very difficult to desludge. In these cases, the operator adds water and mixes with hand tools to try to get as much of the sludge out of the tank as possible. Let's take a quick look at the personal protective equipment our team is using. They've got the rubber boots on, the gloves, and the face mask. Not too bad. But remember, personal protective equipment must be worn all the time, not just when it's convenient or when the boss is around. This is a 3.6 uh, cubic meter. Uh -huh. Water starts to build up the tank.
Here the crew finds another access port, and this compartment will be desludged as well. Depending on what kind of lenses you get. The helper runs some clean water through the hose to clean it off. The entire unloading process takes less than 10 minutes. Leaky hoses are an environmental hazard and should be repaired or replaced as necessary. Well, there you have it. I hope you found this discussion on collection and transportation of fecal sludge useful. You can follow the link for more information.